Crusaders of Crypto. I believe this is one of the first roguelites that I've ever played on the blockchain. This one's for Binance Smart Chain, and I've been having a lot of fun with it the last few days, ever since developers reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to do a sponsored video for it. They have a really interesting story and even a bit of tragedy that happened with their first launch. But here we are to show you guys the game, and I'm excited to get into it and show you how it goes. If you've ever played Roguelites before, you'll know what I mean. It's kind of like Cardinal Quest, which I covered on my channel a good little while back, and it was a really, really neat roguelike concept. So there's a few options here that we could go through. The loot room is how you're going to collect your winnings or your earnings from actually holding the token that this game is based around. And Delve is the adventure mode, and that's what we're going to get into right here. You start off with a little layout as you can see you have a chest and a few bags that you can pick up and i ended up picking up a few potions as well as some gear a vampire has a chance to oh a vampire necklace has a chance to heal the wearer on hit so every time i hit something i can get a little bit of health from it and that's going to help my sustain my sustainability you can see my health bar right there and we're going to start exploring there are a few tabs that you can check here like the map the inventory of course those potions it tells you what they do and your combat log kind of tells you what damage so we've got like a little wizard here that is approaching me there's no range combat so it's basically when you get around something you can start moving but it's going to move right along with you now if you get adjacent to it and it's their turn they're going to hit you so you just press forward in here and you can see that i actually healed a little bit that's the vampire ability going off but man i am doing a lot of damage to them but they're the, for the first enemy man they hit me kind of hard let's take a look at the potions here so I have a small health potion and a regen potion. I'm going to dig a little bit further before I start doing that. Uh, it looks like we could go left or right here. And uh, got to kind of be careful. Oh, there's a huge loot room. Hello. Oh, it's all closed in. Is there a way to teleport in there or something? I don't know. Okay, there's a bat. From what I know, bats usually move pretty fast. Okay, we're going to get the jump on this guy. We did, yeah, they, so they take 10 damage. You gotta kinda mentally think about how much hit points these have so that you can know if you win the battle or not. So he's gonna hit me first, but I only have to hit him like twice before I do some damage. And I healed a little bit, that's good. All right. We have right around the same level of health. As long as we're fighting bats, I think we'll be okay. Okay, so this little black spider, you saw how it just took 40 points of damage. This reminds me of, I was telling talking to the developer about this. It kind of reminds me of the black little blob if you ever played Gauntlet. Um, you can't really kill it. Well, it can kill itself, but I'll show you what happens. So you can see that it's taking damage every time it moves. And this is the way to kill it. You eventually just run until it's dead. But you can't kill them. And they'll one-shot you if they get in melee range with you. So you got to be very careful. So this guy's going to follow me all the way up. But what I'm going to do first is actually get this potion just in case I run into something dangerous. And let's see, last time he took about four hits, I believe. Healing a little bit is nice. This is actually the fifth hit, the sixth hit. Oh my goodness. So there's some sort of elemental and there's some sort of slime. I believe slimes are pretty easy too, but I do have some other options here. Let me take a look at the map. And I'm right here right now. I think I'm gonna go left. No, I can't go left right there. How about here? Trying to find some loot without that much resistance would be... Ooh, there's a chest right there. That would be the ideal scenario. And it looks like... I'm moving forward here, but I'm not... All right. Oh. So these blue ghosts, I'm pretty sure do damage over time. Now he's going to start coming towards me. I do have some regen potions and stuff, so let's see what I can do. Oh, they're just one hit. Nice. So if they don't hit you, you don't take damage over time. And this is a new weapon. Hello. Flaming Staff. Chance to explode when swinging. Expl <laughs> Does that mean it's going to blow me up? Oh my god, I don't know if I want to use it. I don't think you have a choice. When you have equipment, it's pretty much equipped, you know? All right, let's let's uh, let's see if we can attack this slime. Oh my goodness. All right, I am going to need to use a health potion here. Let's use a small health potion. And oh my gosh, they're doing eight points of damage at a time. Okay, I'm going to use large regen. 
Dang, I died. So, the slimes do more damage than I thought they would. You can watch the replay too. You can save and share. You can return to the main, main menu or you could start over. Let's let's dig a little bit deeper with start over again and see if we can get something a little better. Okay, so we got the necklace again. You can get different weapons or gear when you start up. It's kind of like random, you know? And now you do have a three small regen potions. So these are widely different, as you can see. All right, so he's gonna do damage over time to me, but I'm, I'm healing a little bit. Oh gosh. So it didn't take nearly as many hits as it did for me to kill that that thing versus the wizard but uh that little wizard that that, that damage over time something else okay so we got another one of these guys easy now you can't you can't get you can't let him trap you because that's some bad stuff the music's jamming isn't it all right we have first jib uh, jab on him jab okay two elementals here so they hit for four Okay, so I just hit him five times. Okay, I'm gonna need to use a potion here. Come on! Okay, six hits it takes. So we're gonna have to use a regen here at the very least. Now, regen works when you move. Oh, uh, okay, come on. Please be something good. Okay, another regen potion. I'll take it. Actually, I'm gonna. Oh, that was a large one, too, huh? Let's use the small one and get our health back up again so we can get that other chest. Two three four five and this is kind of how you have to strategize most fights here oh it was a six that time i wonder if it's a little random aha uh -huh, we got a weapon that's neat uh wrong tab this is a poison dagger one prick does the body bad okay so uh, unfortunately the weapon is not gonna be as good as defense at this point right now but a good offense is also a good defense i guess you could say let's dig a little bit more and see if we can do something now i've gotten to the boss of the first level before and it was a doozy all right so there's our five so it doesn't look like we do more than five damage with the dagger i guess it has to do with damage over time all right so we got that guy the black spider Oh, I did 10. So is that just like a crit? Or is that how much damage I do? Hey, that looked like a shield. Uh-huh. Silver shield protects the wielder from a warm. So it's an elemental effect? Interesting. Nope. No, you don't. <laughs> hey, they one-shot you, man. They get they get a hold of you, and that's it. That's game. All right. Okay, that was a health potion. That's good. I'll take it bit further up man the music just makes you want to adventure too huh? all right uh one of these trolley closed rooms all right that is not cool man that is not cool you keep showing me stuff like that so this is gonna be a little tricky not that bad though not that bad all right 10 i do like that okay here's our wizard friend uh he's not our friend at all okay we doing 12 14 Dude, this thing is a lot more powerful than we were at first. Are we ready to take on slimes? There's some loot back there, so I think the answer is yes. Okay, they don't have a whole lot of hit points either. Okay, let's take the small health potion. And let's let this spider start coming towards us. Hopefully we get some more, ooh, some more potions. Okay, we got the staff. Oh, it drops the, uh, it drops the dagger. Man, I don't know, guys. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with the dagger still. So there's no reason to kill them. There's no experience in the game that I know of. So we're, we're just not going to mess with him at all. We're just gonna go down another path. We're gonna try to find our way again. Okay, we can keep going to the right here. Hmm. Let's go up a little bit. Oh, there's a stair. So, the first thing I want to do is use a small potion. Make sure... I know this is the boss, right? So, I'm going to make sure that my health is absolutely full. I'm going to use one more regen since we might need an instant heal once we're there. Now we have full health. Let's do it. Okay, the name of this boss, Flashlonius. <laughs> it's like the Flashlon attacks for the crypto exploits anyway uh let's go ahead and uh, 
get wearing melee with him. So we're doing six to him. He's doing three to us. Seven. Oh, he's trying to cast something. Can we interrupt him? Ouch! Okay. <laughs> All right. So I used a regen potion here. I think I want to use another heal because he's going to use this spell again. Oh my god, I'm still alive somehow. Somehow I'm still alive. Okay, I'm using another potion, y'all. I think I'm dead. God! How, how do you have to be to beat this guy? So we got a kill score of 18,000, a damage score of 4440, giving us that total score of 2240. Now, this score actually goes towards the leaderboards, and the person that is highest on the leaderboards actually gets a huge BNB &B prize. I'm going to go over those details now. So right now, earning is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is be number one on the leaderboards. You have to do better than I did. At least kill the first boss, right? I'm sure plenty of people have killed him. But you get about a half a BNB or 0.5 BNB, which is, at the time of this video recording, if you're watching it later, is BNB somewhere in the neighborhood around 330 bucks. So you'd probably be looking at about 170, something like that. It's pretty good, man. And there's also some more stuff coming down the roadmap, which is pretty cool. They've got something called pvpd which is essentially player versus player dungeons meaning that you can design a dungeon and you can have someone try to beat it there's a bunch of rewards that's going to be coming with that and you get passive rewards for earning the token so check this out there's a loot room here and if you click on loot room it's fairly straightforward right you just go in there's a chest you'd step onto it and you'll see the total looted from the dungeon in bnb's what the loot rate is based on your collection, how much you've actually looted, and the loot available. Now, if I own some of this token right now, or enough of it, I owned a certain percentage, and there was a transaction, anybody that would actually be buying the token, you would get a percentage of that in the terms of 5% of whatever that transaction fee would be. The other 5% actually goes back towards the liquidity of the token for a total of 10%. So it's like a 10% tax when you actually buy the token. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. On the front page, crusadersofcrypto.com, all you got to do is click buy on PancakeSwap. PancakeSwap's a decentralized exchange and it deals with BNB tokens. So it'll give you the option to trade BNB for Crusader. And you can do the opposite if you wanted to sell some of the Crusader for BNB. If I were to take right right now, I have about 0.38 BNB. So if I would put 0.3 in here, which is roughly $110 or something like that, it would give me the ability to trade it out for the Crusader tokens in that amount right now. <laughs> now, there's a pretty big supply of tokens, but people like large numbers and the dev said that they wanted to appease the people. So here we go with that. So you can see right here what the price of crusader is how many per bnb or bnb per crusader and this is the amount of crusader tokens that i would take right now i'm just going to buy one i want to see a little bit about it now you have to change the slippage amount or you're going to get this error it's because of the tax that's included so what i'm going to do is just change the settings here on pancake swap it's easy you just click this little button change the slippage to 11 percent that's not q 11 <laughs> percent should be fine and then you hit swap and you said yes and you're gonna have to have a metamask wallet or another binance wallet or a binance token wallet i should say you get the transaction submitted it takes a couple of seconds and then you get your reward so once you have your bnb in there and the transactions start coming based on the percentage of the amount that you have is when you start being able to loot through the dungeon and there it is swap 0.1 bnb for 246 I don't know how many tokens it is, but it's a lot. And now I have that balance and I'm ready to play some more. Well, the tokenomics or dungeonomics are listed on the website here if you wanted to look at it. You'll notice here it says the tokens from prior sale. So they actually had a first launch that failed because of an exploit in code. I was actually very interested in this because not only do I have my own social token that I use in my Discord for governance, that I have all sorts of plans for, but I always wondered what a lot of these exploits are that were happening around the internet in major crypto projects. And it just so happens that 
one line of code was enough to exploit certain users to sell infinite amounts of this token that they did not have. Naturally, this caused a big mess. So they took a vote from the community to actually relaunch the game using their own funds from their personal incomes and make it right by the players to even further compensate them after the launch was done. You didn't have to apply for nothing or do any sort of forms to fill out. And I think that's a very, very admirable thing. And it just goes to show you guys, you have to be careful what you invest in and never to invest more than you're willing to lose. This is all play money. After all, it's a game. You know, it's an investment too, of course, but you just have to pay attention to what you're doing. And that's why it's important to be able to see things like these tokenomics and the plans that developers have for the game. As a matter of fact, if we jump to the roadmap, there's actually an audit that they just ended up paying for. It cost them like $10,000 to make sure that this audit was done so that exploits wouldn't happen again at the second go around. And there's a bunch of other updates coming down the road. PVPD, which I talked about, is going to allow you to buy NFTs and you can use them to create these dungeons as well as decorate your own little dungeons. There's going to be a bunch of cool features that they named, like being able to use specific monsters in the dungeons and try to make it to where it's very difficult for players to compete for these B and B challenges, right? There's going to be paid entry leaderboard competitions as well as a ton of other items and stuff. If I take a look at my reference here, they have over 80 pieces of equipment, a hundred different monster art types. Like right now, we have elementals, slimes, spiders, gnomes, bats, the blue ghost that did the the damage over time to me, and golems. Naturally, there's even player classes that they're going to be introducing like tank, DPS, magic. I always loved the fact that games like this kind of give you the ability to replay them over and over and over again in different ways. And this rewards you with B&B if you get really, really good with it. It's a win-win situation for me. I'm definitely going to be playing more of this game. You can check it out right here, guys. It's very, very easy to play. As you saw, you go to crusadersofcrypto.com. You just go to play at the top right corner of the screen. It loads it right up. If you don't have a wallet, you can actually log in as guest if you just want to try. It doesn't cost anything at all. And if you do log in with your wallet, like a MetaMask wallet or a BNB wallet, you can just get right into it just by playing as guest. It gives you the same gaming experience without the, the ability to go through loot. Uh, you can go to Delve and get right back to gaming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this showcase of Crusaders of Crypto. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, this is Uljin signing off. We'll see you next time.